Okay. Welcome to the MSA Servitization Module Class 14 Benchmarking and Feedback for Service Contracts. Today's objectives, um, I want you to use some ERP data to try and benchmark service performance. I'm going to give you some inputs on it, but really useful to actually have a good look at it and see how you can actually get insights from that data. Um, this is really about data to information and action and how we integrate that with customer feedback. So we've got both sides of it. And I'm going to give you some visualization to help support the decision making there and the feedback. Last class, last section. Service benchmarking, do watch the video. ERP data, um, finance collect a lot of data and there's actually a lot of stuff in there that we can actually see so we understand what's going on. It's a method of measuring and improving our organizational performance by comparing ourselves with the best. Service shops, business units and business. Think how the logic is and the build up. This is something I think we don't look at. We look at either high or too low and we don't see the story that it's all the information is telling us um, monthly ERP data is great CRM data is great you have to be able to combine it and mash it up so you can really understand what the heck is going on there if you don't understand what's going on um, your business will be out of control this is what we've looked up look at it on a business level business unit level and then location level follow that through so you can actually see whether the location follows the business unit trend and whether the business unit is different than the average of the business. So here what I've taken, I've taken the invoice data, gross margin and the invoice data. And you see we've got some losses, um, but actually the majority of it is around 40%. And we can see that we're getting the same. It's really important to keep the scales the same. Alternatively, I've turned it into box plots, again in Excel, so nothing fancy. So I can actually see the scatters. I can understand it. And I can see that um, some of them have a much bigger scatter and some of them are much tighter and cleaner. What does that tell you? Do I over rely on one customer? Overall, in terms of the business, I may not. In terms of a particular location, I may have a bad breakdown in terms of customers. Break it down, have a look. I don't want high concentrations unless I'm able to manage it. Invoices, how many of the invoices give me how much of sales for the business and for a particular location? Um, I want 50%, I want a straight line really between um, top to bottom. But you see there's a curve, um, there's a lot of small invoices um, and then there's a few uh, that make up the rest. Think about how you want to see that and try and understand what the shape of that curve is for your business and try and improve the shape of the curve to make it more robust. With Excel, you can do overlay so you can actually see where the locations come from. Uh, location one has good sales, but it's also got a lot of sales in um, other regions. Why? So you need to go down to a regional basis. That's where postcodes are very helpful. Control plots, are we going and increasing, following the line that we expected? Um, accountants hate it because every month's different. Well, that's life. Now, what I'm looking for here is some sort of consistency in the business. I also would like sales to remain within the control lines. Whether they're flat or whether they're going up every month, I think is, is something that we can discuss later. But really, I want to have a very slow, boring uh, corridor that we're following. Other data to look at, the return on sales here, jobs sold, how big were the jobs? Um, jobs in hours to see whether we're changing our business, total sales. Um, how's productivity changing? Is it changing? Here we're looking at um, hours sold, return on sales to see whether there's a relationship between the two of them. Um, sometimes there is, sometimes there's not. Sometimes if we get too many hours sold, we find out that the margin actually decreases. Because what we're doing is we're using overtime and that's more expensive. So here, what are we looking at? We're looking at total sales 
or gross profit against under over absorption as a percentage of sales. I'm trying to see how the business is working. It is possible to get under and over absorption at the same period. We want to manage that out so it doesn't happen. Again, monthly consistency, total sales versus materials costs as a percentage of sales. We're trying to find out whether there's been any major increase, whether we've got larger pass-through in terms of materials or whether we're, our, our, our labour is about right. So on top of that, I recommend that you have some core KPIs and some secondary um, key result indicators. Um, pretty obvious what some of them are less obvious with some of the others why per full time employee why per square meter I'm trying to find out how the business looks to see whether there's a business model change is the business consistent benchmarking from billing data, consistency of the business, reliance on key customers, reliance on large orders, monthly ERP data, business sustainability, trends, forecast, dependency of key values. Using alternate metrics, more can be learned. Consistency of the business, deviations, effect of full-time employees, and uh, number of square meters you have. Extensions to measure effectiveness and efficiency of the business. Cost, ROS. Um, so using that ERP data, I think what we're really able to do is understand how the business is changing. It requires a different hat on from the finance guy who's looking at it in a particular financial way to do the financial reporting. But here we have lots of data that we can use it from. Getting feedback from customers. Service quality is hard to measure, so we have to measure it. How do we measure it? Uh, can we create a system? And uh, what's the model for measuring it? So cool. Typical manufacturer's KPIs, useful but don't always help. We're trying to measure intangibles, so we're trying to measure experience and capability. Um, with a machine, I can measure it much more easily because I get a measure out. Effectively, what I'm doing is I'm asking you, well, how was it for you? We must understand the life cycle. We need to actually talk to all of these people here to find out how it was for them. Efficiency and effectiveness need to be measured and we need to be objective, objectives to, ca to capture hard and soft facts. This relates back to job to be done and did it meet your expectations. I don't like SLAs, um, I think there's a lot of malaise about them. Um, we need to discriminate between situations. That's one of the hardest things we're trying to do. Yeah, you made your availability target, but we lost it in your main, your main month of operation. Imagine you're a shop and you can't, and, and you lose quarter four. You lose all your Christmas revenues. What does that mean to your business? It means that you go bankrupt. So we have to be very careful with them. Um, service quality is a, another way to measure it. Don't over or under deliver. Um, Wikipedia has a good way to uh, describe this. You can look up the academic reading after you've been there. How do we create a system? Um, job's done, what do we do? Here's one I made earlier. Hard facts, soft facts, efficiency and effectiveness. What do we need for every project? We should ask all the stakeholders, internal and external. Customer journey mapping really helps us with this. Any bad feedback we have here, treat as an NCR, then we can learn. What are the hard, hard facts about quality? What do we do if they're outside the boundary, the accepted boundaries? This confirms if we're meeting internal and external expectations. Soft facts, was it well managed, communications, changes, commitments? This is an empathy aspect. Net promoter score is a number. Um, there we go, Callow Hall's there, what happened? He didn't like what we did. So then what do we do? We go and find out, we treat it as a non-compliance. So 
Services are hard to measure because there's no service quality measuring stick. Um, you can't see how fast it was really, or effective. Um, so we have to find better ways to do it. Um, it needs to track the tangible and intangible inputs, which is, makes it harder. I hope you have designed a system to be able to measure quality because that to me is important. And you've seen my system for measuring service quality. Now go and build your own in your own firms. Data to information. The final section here, we need to be able to com convert that data that we had. And this is really what we had done earlier in the class. What's the indications? What does the metric tell us? And what's the lever underneath it that tells us? Box plots are great. You've seen them. Understand how to use them. Uh, control charts are also excellent. Understand how to put them together. These visualization tools help us support decision making. That is honestly, it does say the wood <clears throat> in there. Visualization of this, not just the numbers. So you'll see that my graphics there were quite visual in terms of dashboards and displays. It takes time to get it right, and it's it's a both an art and a science, and you'll need to iterate to find out what helps you make the right decisions. Thanks. We've used ERP data to get service benchmarking. Try it again, try it again. Play with the numbers in Excel. We've seen how to collect direct customer feedback. We've converted data to information and then onto action. And we've shown that visualization helps. We can now look at benchmarking service performance and feedback in a service friendly way. Thanks very much. That ends the uh, servitization module.